Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Now today what we've got behind us is a 2006 Opel Astra 1.6 and if you can see from the state of the tyres we have a problem. Now this car came into me the other day because it was missing and that's all he told me. It's missing can you sort it out? Turns out it was a coil pack, replaced the coil packs, the plugs were dodgy so we replaced the plugs and the coil pack. Sorted, simple. Took it for a drive because you always have to take a car for a drive after you've done something just to make sure it's all okay. And this is the worst car I've ever driven. Now, the only way I can describe it is if you know of a London bendy bus, so the bus essentially bends in the middle. Well, this is what this feels like. It feels like the front of the car and then the back of the car are two completely different things. It's like they just bend in the middle and does whatever it wants to do. You hold the steering wheel going down the road. In fact, the steering wheel was like this. And the back of the car just does this and it pushes you left and right with the steering wheel dead straight. It just goes all over the shop. So dangerous. These tires were practically new yesterday. He drove it from London to here, not because he wanted to see me, um, because he is, he's, He's keeping this car here as a home here and a home there. So he wants to keep his car here. And he never told me about this. He said, oh, I thought it felt a bit weird. So, <laughs> yeah, a bit weird. Now, what I found out since is this car has been in an accident to the point of where the airbags has popped out. And he was told it was just the front that got the knock. So all the front's been repaired and it's been absolutely perfect. We have an issue with the back axle. Now, I'm going to show you the issue with the back axle but what I also did is just it's just easy to show the customer I went down to another garage who has one of them big fancy tracking machines which I don't have that you know is um you put it on the on the computer and it tells you the, the the camber the cast tells you absolutely everything and the back of this is just red the wheels are three degrees this way and five degrees this way it's just it's shocking I'll put the picture up here for it it was just easy to show the customer physical you know everything in the red so I'm going to show you what I found on it and how you can see just how bad it is. Right, so we've got this wheel, it looks okay now. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, what's this? Yes, we have some serious marks taken out of it and all this here. So this got one hell of a bang um, from a curve of something, I'm not sure, but as you can see, it's massive road rash there. This is the tire. <laughs> as you can see just really bad actually rolling up on the edges now he said these tires were absolutely perfect when he left um, and when he saw them he was shocked this is the other tire you can see the wires coming through this one and the canvas canvas even um, no marks on this wheel but that doesn't matter both wheels are actually out of spec completely even though it's only this side that got a bang obviously the pressure on this side and it's bent the axle this side as well. I'm just going to show you this because I've seen people test axles this way which you can't do. They grab the wheel and they spin it and as long as the wheel spins level which this does, this wheel isn't doing this, it's spinning around nice, they say oh no that's not warped. No, you can tell if a wheel's warped that way but you can't tell anything else. This is completely gone at the back which I'll show you in a minute but as you can see that wheel is is running nice and straight just case in point we'll show you on this wheel now this is the wheel that got the bang remember so if any wheel is going to be warped it's going to be this one when i spin that absolutely fine might look a bit weird because that's because of the tire the way the tire is worn but the wheel isn't doing this it's absolutely fine right this is what i'm going to show you it isn't a scientific way but it'll give you a good visual idea the proper way is to put it on the machine like i did to actually give you the proper readings but I can fit two of my fingers between the chassis rail here and the tire. As you can see, two fingers fits. This side, on the other hand, I can fit <laughs> four fingers. Now they are a bit crushed, but four fingers between the wheel and the back chassis. And that's even with the plastic guard on it. So you can clearly see, let the camera focus, see the big gap there and how small the gap is there. Now it might not show on camera, but you can see the difference. It's two fingers of a gap, people, two fingers. Yeah, so two fingers, so that's huge. Now, you might not really be able to see, but essentially this wheel, not only is it kinked in at the top, it's also, as you look down from the top, it's actually coming out as well. So that wheel is just scrubbing across the road. It's not even really turning properly, it's just scrubbing. And this back wheel got some sort of a hit. Nowhere near as bad as the other one, but as you can see from the tire, it's still really bad. There's a couple more things I want to show you as well, but 
like I said, the only real way to know exactly what's happening is to get it put on a laser machine, a tracking laser machine, one of the really big ones that will tell you absolutely everything. Because what happens is they plug it into the computer, they put what the car is, and preloaded on the car is all the manufacturer's specifications. So the computer knows what the car should be. And if it's out of spec in any way, then it shows up on the computer. And you can determine from what it is to exactly what's going on. I knew this was bent because you can clearly see, but like I said, if you want to be 100% sure on exactly what is bent, um, with this type of axle, you cannot do anything with it. Once it's bent, it's bent. There's no, there's no adjustment for the tracking. There's no nothing. Now, if you've got a really bad wheel bearing, that can pull out a wheel. We don't have a bad wheel bearing. Uh, the back bushings, which I'm about to show you again, they can kind of put the wheels off, but nowhere near as bad. And they can't really do anything with the camber like this is. Um, so, you know, that's another thing. If your camber's gone, then it's just essentially just been hit too hard, which is bent here. You're not going to be able to see it. Like, it looks, to physically look at it, it looks perfect. You'll never physically be able to see it. But you've got to remember, if it's only a mil gone here, by the time it gets out to the tyre, that could be 10 mil. So, you know, if you've got a long pole and it's bent at one end, well, the, the, it gets worse and worse as it goes all the way up. So you're physically not going to be able to see this bent unless it's really bad. Um, but you know, like this looks absolutely fine. It's a big, huge lump of metal. You kind of think how it's impossible for this to bend, but they do. Um, so I'm going to show you the bushings and then there's one more thing to show you and then that's it. Now we have the two main axle bushings here. Um, and as you can see, when I put a big bar in them, it's moving a little bit. It's slightly cracked, but I mean, it, it really isn't bad. I mean, it's not, it's nothing to worry about. We're putting an axle in this. We're going to get a second axle and we are going to be replacing these bushings for new ones. But as you can see, I mean, they're, they're not bad enough to make any problems here whatsoever. Um, so I'm not worried about that. And once I seen them, I knew it was fine. Like I said, if they're really, really bad, like hanging out, um, but still you wouldn't get the problems we're having you'd have other problems so that's that's the back axle bushings one more thing i want to show you just so you can see how bad this actually is now if you look at the spring the back spring you look at the bump stop at the top more or less lines up with the bump stop at the bottom more or less kind of a straight line i'll show you with a piece of string in a second but then you look at this one I don't know if you can even see, even the spring, even the spring looks, well, it doesn't look, it is. Even the spring is bent over to one side. A huge difference between the two. So I've just got a piece of string and I'll just hold it more or less kind of in line in the middle there. You can see, if I can see, it's slightly off to one side, but it is quite close to the middle of the bottom bump stop there that is kind of all in line the spring kind of looks straight coming down now this side you might need a bit of light on here there we go just make it a bit easier so i'll do the same thing again this time light some away <laughs> i don't know if you can actually see the difference um that this piece of string is on the outside of this bump stop now. Um, it's, you know, it should be, to give you an idea, it should be, well, actually, no, sorry, the, the string is right. That, that's, that, the string is right. But the middle of the bump stop, which is where my finger is, that's essentially where it should be. The string should be hitting more or less where my finger is. Um, so yeah, you can just see how much it's off. And when you look at it again, Hopefully it's coming through on camera. The bottom of this spring has been kicked out this way. You can just see it's, it's a mess. Right, I know I'm gonna mostly get people also saying, you know, you can take measurements from corner to corner and left and right. Yes, of course you can, but you need to know what the measurements are for the factory settings, which is not always easy to get. Um, with these few very simple things I showed, even using your fingers, you can clearly see there is a bigger gap from one side than the other, which they shouldn't be. You know, the axle's supposed to be straight, the wheels are supposed to be, everything's supposed to be level and straight. You can clearly see from this that we have a problem from the tyres and stuff, but get it put, 
take it down to your local garage who has them tracking gauges. Now, I don't mean I have a set of tracking gauges up there, but they won't do it. You need the computer-based one, the one where they put the lasers on each wheels and the mirrors, and it goes back to the computer, and it knows exactly where the wheels are. That's what you need, because that has the factory settings built in, and that will tell you instantly whether you have a problem or not. You know if the camber's out, for example, on something like this, you cannot adjust the camber on this. Now, if you had a BMW, yes, there is camber adjustment on a BMW. So there's camber adjustments on a lot of cars, but some cars that have a solid axle like this, there's just no camber adjustment you can do. If the camber is off, it's off because it's bent. Something is bent somewhere. Um, so that is the easiest way to kind of tell if your axle is damaged, you know, just use common sense, get up off the ground, see what you can see. You know, you can use a tape measure or even a ruler, put it on top of the tire, let it hit the, the frame and measure. You know, there's a few simple things you can do um, and obviously take it for a drive is the big thing, but you don't need to kind of, um, you know, start measuring and stuff. Because I know if I didn't say that, I'm going, oh, all you need to do is measure and blah, blah, blah. Yes, you can do it that way. But for the sake of going down to a garage, giving them a tenner, putting it up on the lift, putting the tracking gauge, even 20 quid, whatever they're going to charge, it's not that expensive to know exactly what is wrong. Very fast, very easy. So yeah, that's it. Sorted. Right, so that's it. That's um, a quick look at this axle bent. Um, now, it is a common problem with these. You know, it doesn't take much for these axles to bend. Uh, Peugeot axles are kind of the same. I know some of the other French axles, once the bushings and bearings go in them, it's cheaper and easier to put a second axle in them. Um, it really doesn't take much to bend these, um, especially when the wheel gets a hit from the bottom. It doesn't take much pressure to push everything inside. Even a little tip, I've seen cars, um, you know, a car to come from side on and hit this wheel at like 10 mile an hour, not even that, and for it to completely bend the axle, it doesn't take much um, but you can clearly see we have a problem here. So what we are going to do, we will film doing this. Uh, we'll film the axle. It's not actually as bad as it sounds replacing the axle. Depending on the axle you get, you can, it can take longer to replace the brakes. Just be careful of the brake lines. If they're rusty, they're going to snap. So you're going to have to do brake lines. But to be fair, it's not really a big deal. There's only a, essentially what's holding it on is the shock. Four bolts around here. And that's it, the axle will come off. Obviously we've got brake lines and stuff, but essentially that's all that's holding the axle on. I don't know what you want to do about the brakes, depending on if we get good brakes with the axle we get second hand, we'll put them on. If they're not, we'll check these out. It is obviously best to put brand new brakes on, but we'll see, it just depends on uh, what the customer wants to do. If these look really good, again, there's no real point. So yeah, I don't know, even with the axle, sometimes you get Sometimes you do get the brake hub, sometimes you don't. Sometimes they take the brakes out. It just depends on who you buy it from. I've seen some axles come with shocks. I've seen some axle comes with springs. Then I've just seen a bare axle. Um, so it just depends on who you get it from, I suppose. Our springs are fine, no point in placing the springs. Possibility we could have a problem with the shock. I doubt it, but something to kind of keep in mind, we'll check them once we take it off. Shocks can be bent and stuff, but again, if the shock was bent, you'd either see it physically leaking or it wouldn't go down all the way and make this horrible noise as it hits a bump because it physically can't travel down all the way. We can't get that. When the car is on the floor, I can press down on the floor and the shock goes up and down. So I'd say we're going to be okay with the shock, but we will check it once we kind of get it off. But that's it, really. We'll film this. Um, and yeah, sorted. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, the usual stuff. Links up here, links down there. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.